Hello everyone, this is Tim from Snowbank Games with a quick uh, walkthrough video showing you how to set up and use the Jigsaw Puzzle package. Um, I'm going to start right from the beginning with a test project so you can see all of the steps needed to hook up things like the universal render pipeline and, uh, and the other settings that are required for this particular package. Um, so you could, if you wanted, um, pick the universal render pipeline from the Unity Hub. I'm, I'm using the Unity Hub here to start a new project. But actually I'm going to start with just the standard 3D package um, because uh, um, there are, I've already provided some assets um, for the universal render pipeline. So I'll show you how to go right from the very beginning and set up everything that you need. So let me just start a new project called Jigsaw Test and just create that. So with the project um, started up, we can go to the assets and import the custom package. Okay, so you should navigate to wherever you've saved the package and click open. And basically you'll want to, you'll want to leave everything checked and hit import. So once everything's imported, you'll notice that the console shows a couple of um, build errors, and that's because we need to um, hook up, uh, import and hook up the extra packages that um, aren't included by default. Uh, so we need to go to the uh, window and package manager, and hopefully it should uh, expand eventually. There we go. Uh, so there's two things, two packages we need to import. We need to import the universal render pipeline, which is this one. So I'll install that. Okay, so with that installed, the next one we need to install is the vector graphics package. Now this currently, um, as of um, February 2021, it's a, um, a preview package. So we need to go up here to advanced and say show preview packages. And you should see somewhere around here, there we go, Vector Graphics uh, Preview Package uh, version 2.0.0 and I will install that as well. Okay, great, so all of the uh, build errors have disappeared, which is exactly what we want. Um, there's one other thing we need to do, but I, I will show you um, actually first of all um, what happens if we don't hook up the Universal Render Pipeline. Uh, so what you should see is you've now got the Jigsaw Puzzle package in your Assets folder. And if I plus that out, you'll see several subfolders. Uh, we have Documentation, uh, the Universal Render Pipeline Assets, which I'll show you in a second, and two systems. We've got the P Jigsaw Puzzle Generation and then the Jigsaw Puzzle System. So Jigsaw Puzzle Generation is um, what you will use to create um, prefab jigsaw puzzles that you can then use in the jigsaw puzzle system. So we'll walk you through that one at a time. And um, what I'm going to do initially is just uh, expand this and go into the the only scene in here, which is the jigsaw puzzle prefab generator scene. And if I double click that, you can see everything is pink, and that's because we're all of this is using um, universal render pipeline assets, and we haven't yet set up the universal render pipeline. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to go up to the uh, project settings and we need to go to graphics and we need to assign a um, render pipeline asset here. So let me go to the universal render pipeline assets. Now I've provided several different ones here um, for various different qualities. I'm going to assign the high quality one in the first instance and you can see that everything pops into life. And if I go to the, um, the game view, uh, you can see um, the, the scene is fully rendered properly. Uh, right, so that's that's great. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go through uh, these other ones, but just to know that um, uh, the different um, uh, different quality um, settings here that I provided uh, just have different um, shadow details and um, smooth or soft shadows. Okay, so with the render pipeline um, all set up, um, we've got uh, got these two different uh, systems that uh, I need to walk you through. Uh, so we'll stick with initially with the um, prefab generator scene uh, under the jigsaw puzzle generation uh, part of this package. Um, so basically we don't need to worry about any of the rest of this stuff in the in the first instance. Uh, so what we can do is we can just jump straight in and click play. So you can see when you click play, it loads in a test image. Now this test image, uh, you can find that actually over in the test input sprites folder here. So I've provided uh, three test sprites um, just initially to get you get you started. Uh, we have a, a landscape image, 
to, to for generating landscape jigsaw puzzles, a portrait image for portrait ones, and a square one, which obviously is for square images. I've imported all of these as sprites, and the reason for that is that you get um, the correct aspect ratio, uh, in this case 3000 by 2000 pixels for, for both the portrait and the landscape, um, obviously in the, in the different uh, dimensions there. Um, but uh, what I'm actually going to do is load in um, a completely fresh uh, image, um, an external image, um, so you can see exactly what you would do if you wanted to load in an image of your choice. Uh, so you've got various settings here, um, and I'm going to start go through them one at a time. So initially what you'll want to do is you want to click the load image button here. Uh, now this will ping up a, um, uh, a dialog box here. Uh, and let me see if I can show you what this looks like. Large icons. There we go. Uh, so I've got a single test image here um, called page one. This is from um, a game I made uh, recently called The Adventures of Wolf and Hood. And if I click open, it will load that image in and it will perform uh, what I call um, squarification. So it's basically imported the image and then turned it into a square texture. So this is important because the jigsaw puzzles themselves use a mesh-based system where the mesh is UV mapped into uh, the area defined by the image. So if we wanted to save this squarified image, um, it will, it should, what it should do is it will save it into the prefab assets squarified images folder under the jigsaw puzzle system subfolder here. So you can see already um, I've saved the, uh, the three um, test images but if I go ahead and say save squarified image here it'll take a couple of seconds and then that image now gets saved to this folder under the name squarified and then the original name of that file in this case page one and you can see it's now created the uh, uh, the square um, texture for this particular image. What we can then do is we can generate um, the actual puzzle um, prefab for this particular image so up here we've got various settings um, you've got the minimum number of pieces maximum number of pieces and then a setting called max piece non-squareness so this is an important uh, slider that you um, might need to use if you have a particularly strange shape uh, input image and you want to be able to um, create a jigsaw with a sort of nice round number of pieces so if i um, show this drop down here you've got uh, various options um, to give you a sort of filtering on the number of pieces. So you've got multiples of 5, multiples of 10, 20, 50, 100. So if I click 100 and then click this, you can see that the only two options avail available to me are 400 and 600 pieces. Um, so if I just put this all the way down and this one all the way up, you can see now I've got 900 pieces. So the this particular arrangement of, uh, of sizes here. But if I increase the uh, max non-squareness all the way up to 0.2, you can see we've now got a few extras. We've got 300, 400, 600, 700, 800, 900, and 1,000. Uh, the reason why that is um, is because this non-squareness parameter just allows you to make um, jigsaw puzzle pieces that are slightly non-square. So 0.2 means that the system is allowing you to select pieces that are anything up to 20% wider or taller than they are um, in the other dimension. So you can make very slightly rectangular shaped pieces. Um, but let's say I'm not too bothered about that. I just want, um, I want, I want to see any number of pieces um, with any type of uh, non-squareness. You can see that you can have absolutely tons of options. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a nice, a nice low number here, 24 pieces. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that for, for the time being. I'm going to leave these settings alone because I think these are the best settings for, uh, for, the, for, the, for the best looking um, jigsaw puzzles. But feel free to try changing those to, to suit your, your requirements if you want to. Um, and if you find that you can't get back to the originals, you can just click the reset to defaults and this will all, all of these settings will ping back to their original settings. Uh, right at the bottom here, we've got the puzzle piece tab settings. Now these um, these are the settings for the, uh, the the pieces that bulge out of each of each uh, jigsaw puzzle piece. Um, and uh, by changing this, you can change the size of those tabs uh, and how much how wonky they are, the jitter. Okay, so I'm going to leave leave these in. Uh, well, I'm going to leave that right up at the top and leave the tab size at 20. And then right at the bottom here is a random number seed, and I'll show you what that means um, in a minute. So with all those settings set to what we want, we just have to click the Generate Puzzle button. 
Now it will take um, anything up to a couple of seconds depending on, on your particular uh, computer's um, performance. And you can see that it's got rid of the squareified image and turned the whole thing into a, a jigsaw puzzle. Now I've uh, hooked up a zoom control for the mouse and you can zoom in and you can see see what the pieces look like and uh, you can decide whether or not that's uh, that's the right sort of arrangement um, for your particular needs. Um, if you want to, you can change the seed, click read digital, and you can see that the tabs have changed arrangement. If I increase the tab size all the way up to 25 here, and then click again, you can see that the size of the tabs increases. Drop it right down to 15, and you can see that they've shrunk down. I'm going to reset that to the median there of uh, 20. The jitter, if I s scroll that right down to zero and then regenerate, you can see that there is no there's no longer any randomness in the uh, in the path that these tabs take they're all perfectly symmetric and then crank it right back up again to four whoops i dragged that accidentally there and you can see that all the pieces have been shuffled very slightly so they're a little bit wonky so let's say that i'm happy with that arrangement i can uh, let's uh, tell you what let me let me select where this is going to ultimately end up in the uh, puzzle models prefab a prefabs uh, folder here and I click save puzzle prefab it will take a little a little while because it's saving all of the various textures that are required and it's now created that prefab here and along with that it's also created the material for for the uh, for the puzzle so there we go and it's also saved the two textures um, that you need to create the material. So we've got the, the seams. This is what creates the, the dark lines between the pieces and also the normal map, which gives it that extra um, level of dimension along the edges. So we've got our prefab. And we have our squareified image. Now these are two independent things and you can combine any squareified image with any jigsaw puzzle model as long as it's the correct aspect ratio in this case uh, three by two so once you've created one squareified image you can then create any number of um, puzzle prefabs that have the correct aspect ratio so you only need to do the um, squareification of the image once and then create multiple prefabs so what we'll do now is we'll move over to the jigsaw puzzle system if we open up the main test scene here, you can see there's the Jigsaw Puzzle system example scene. And we'll go into that. So here I've um, already dropped in the three um, example prefabs that I'd created uh, previously. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this off. I'm going to go to my prefab assets folder, find the prefab that I created earlier, and then just drag that into the scene. Now you'll see that the uh, square, the squareified image um, that we saved earlier is um, not applied to the material for this particular um, prefab and that's entirely deliberate because what it means is you can assign any any image to this that you like um, and uh, it doesn't have to be the, the, the one that you started with as long as it's the correct um, aspect ratio. Um, here I've got um, a sort of helper script called image assigner uh, and I've just uh, assigned the three different images here, the landscape, portrait, and the square image. If I want to um, change for the image that I created, uh, the, um, the example image that I created earlier, I can go to my squareified images here, take squareified page one, because this is the landscape one, I'm gonna put that in the landscape image here. Now what this does, um, I'm not gonna go into the details, you can look at that uh, on your own time, but it will just look for is this a landscape, a square, or a portrait image? And it will just assign whatever you've got in here. Really, you want something more sophisticated than this, so you can sort of select a particular image. The user can, uh, or the player can pick from a, a, a menu of images, and then it will come when you launch the scene. It will combine the image and the puzzle prefab to create the uh, the final puzzle. But if I then click play, you should have a fully working puzzle. There we go, and it will go through the the scattering animation. And away you go, you're, you're good to go with solving your puzzle. Just like that. And all of these things work as well. You've got the, uh, the ghost image that you can see behind there. Ideally, probably what you want to do is hook this up to some sort of um, slider that increases the, um, uh, the alpha on this background image so uh, the user can see more or less of it depending on uh, their preference. Um, this button works 
to hide and show the inside pieces to um, give players a sort of convenient way to uh, um, to uh, see just the edge pieces and then this button will pull loose pieces in towards um, the the frame uh, and this piece just this button just shuffles the pieces um, back out again so there you go you've got a fully fully functional um, jigsaw puzzle prefab there um, right so that should be everything you need to know um, if there's any questions please get in touch and I will try and help you out um, I hope you find this useful and I look forward to seeing what you create in the future